Okay guys, before we get going, I'm just going to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, I'm going to purposefully, occasionally stand in front of the demo screen, because I really want to drive you to look at this guy here and what he's doing over here. It's really important to see the connection between the way that the user plays his experience and the image on the screen. And something gets a bit lost when you look purely at this, so that's just one little point of, that, point of view there. The other thing is, notice he is sitting down. He is not standing up, jumping around, he can chill out, relax. Couch play is being taken from Milo, <laughs> and we're going to drop it straight into this experience. Yes, come on! Yeah. You can get fat playing Fable. <laughs> this is... <laughs> and we will show you examples later on of how you can play this and potentially drink a beer at the same time. Awesome, yes. Cool. Um, so another thing is, you know like we had the dog in Fable 2 and Fable 3, yeah? Yep. We've yeah. now got a horse. Yeah. The horse is bigger than the dog. Yeah. Now the reason we've got a horse, dogs are great, is this thing's going to carry us over 300 miles of world space we're building for Fable, uh, the journey. So this is a cool. Uh, Big cheap one for that. Don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the parking. Just the pooping. That's the only thing you got to worry about. Uh, so the, the important thing is that this horse has the same kind of attributes. You need to look after your, uh, your horse in the same way you care for your dog. Uh, but this thing it will, will, will die for you, will live for you, will pull you through the world, will take damage for you, and the way you look after it, the way you treat it, it will be unique to you at the player. It'll be your unique experience with, with the horse. So, I will comment as I go along. First of all, I'm going to ask Ted to, to do a very simple action to command the horse to go forward. Simple as that. Yeah. What you see is what you do. It's simple. I don't know. You know, I don't need to know about the buttons. I don't need to worry about which button it is. You just do what you see. It just seems natural if you're sitting down to be on this horse and cart, you can see simply pulling the reins and turning the horse left to right. You're going to be able to move through multiple directions, multiple spaces. We're going to take you over farmland, through woodland, up mountains, across moorlands, across beaches. There's going to be multiple branching in the game. You can go anywhere you want. Okay, you're going quite slowly, so give it another crack on the wood. There you go, a bit faster. Great. Right. Head tracking, you can look around the world on Albion. Which is really cool. Now this is the glinting in the distance. We're not going to stop here, I'll talk about it in a moment. But what you could do with the horse is you need to care for it, you need to look after it, you need to nurture it, you need to make sure it doesn't get uh, lame through going over rough ground. You know, It's your living, breathing companion. Spare nothing to aid our escape. Our presence here makes us vulnerable to enemy attacks. Now the backstory of this idea is Teresa from Fable 1, 2 and 3, she's, she's injured. She, she's lost her second sight and she, you come across her and you need to help her, get her to, um, to the spire. Now what we're going to do in this experience is we're going to tell the story of Teresa properly for the first time. The enemy closes with every passing moment. Simply raise his hand, draining what we're calling life force. Everything in the world that is alive has life force. Life force gives you this stuff. This stuff gives you magic. Magic gives you power. Power gives you a, a, multiple weapons, multiple objects that you can forge and conjure. We collect, we collect life force from anything in the world that's alive. Now, Ted, can we go a bit faster now? It's getting a little bit slow. Yeah. You can use voice commands straight from Milo and Kay. The horse will recognise tones in your voice, gestures with your voice, certain word keyframes, keywords can be picked out by the horse. You can train your horse to understand you with voice commands. Careful. Go too fast. You can die in Fable again. Come on, you can die again. Great. Give us some, you know, give us some, you know, power to live and die in a game. I think that's really important. And you nearly died there, Ted. Do not crash in the demo. Do not fall off a cliff. We haven't got time to start again. So when we get around this corner, this is a little example of a track where we could go down. It's a little mine shaft. This track doesn't really give you the sense of, of branching we have in the experience, it's just what we built for this short demo. But you are going to be able to move in different directions, different choices for how you travel across the world. Okay, you managed to get through alive, great. So, 
For the second part, I'm going to talk about magic. I'm going to show you the magic system we are building here at Lionhead. So we're going to come across a camp of hobs, and we're going to have some fun playing with them. Be wary. There may be more of these. We will have some original from one, two, and three creatures featuring in the journey, and some new creatures. But we can't do a fable without hob. Now this stuff here. These plasma balls. The more of these you have, the more spells you can conjure. You can play with this stuff, you can meld it, you can mold it, you can change it in its property, and it will do different things. But for right now, just simply, we're just gonna push it into the world. Kill a hog. <laughs> oh yeah! So this has just been set up for demonstration purposes to show you a few of the spells, so don't look at it as a reflection of real gameplay. But this hog would give a shield, so he's coping quite well, he's defending this simple bit of magic, he's not really doing much to him, so we're going to do something a bit better. Gary, touch. Bam, you can take him from the, uh, the side. Oop, slow down time. That's a slow time, that's a time spell. Get it drawn on the screen. One-handed after touch. Works well with a beer in the other hand. I keep hearing about this beer, Gary. <laughs> keep asking for it, but not till we finish the show. Okay, now we've got a little group down here. You know, there's too many here to take out with a single spell, so we're going to push these orbs together and pulsate them and push them, push them and create something a bit bigger. Okay, and drag it down. Bam. Missed it again? Oh, he's got it. After touch. Brilliant. <laughs> Melee. You can slap a hop and then blast it. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back. Were you drinking last night, Ted? I was. Just because you promised me the beer and I never got it. Good. Now I'm going to do something more exciting here. We can also make things out of magic. We can create objects, physical objects, lower hands. We can put, we can really forge things out of magic, physical objects like spears in the world. Now see if you can take it in the face. You missed last time. In the face. You got it. <laughs> now Teddy, put it all together. Mummy's back. Big bomb, it's not dying. Still alive, Ted. You spoke too soon, Gary. Still alive. Here she comes. Slow down, time. Still alive. Got it. <laughs> yeah! Okay, that's just a sneak peek of what we're doing at the moment at Lionhead with the journey. Uh, I've missed out lots of stuff to say. I always do. So if you guys have any questions, maybe you'll fill in the gaps, and I'd love for you to throw it out to you guys for any questions. Over there. Yeah. It is well spotted. In fact, somebody said on the forum, you're ripping off last. We had, we've had the darkness throughout the Fable story. Um, yeah, the darkness is, is going to become... Uh, we're going to tell the story of the darkness, we're going to put it into a form, I'm not going to go too far, this man gets really annoyed that I'm sneaking more information out before I'm allowed to, but this is a big adversary uh, in the story and you're going to see it come together in a really cool way. Is yeah. spellweaving coming back in any way, besides just a single casting like we just saw? Good question. I wish Ted hadn't just walked out of the room, because Ted's the designer on that, and I think he could explain it better than me. Where's he gone? If he, comes back, if he comes back in a second, I'd like him to answer that question because he's one of the, the main guys who could answer that, but I will come back to you. So. I know in previous Fable games, you've been able to uh, take information from the previous game and pull it over. Yeah. Will that be available on the journey? You know, I'd love it to be available on the journey, but um, you know, we're, what we're focused on right now is making sure we can do a, a totally supported Connect experience for the core. And there's lots of things I want to do with the journey in forms of time. There's things like co-op play, you know, taking stuff from your previous fable and 
and bringing it into, your, uh, into the journey. Uh, it's a big ask, but we are hearing that from the crowd, so we need to go and scratch our heads back at Lionhead and, and, and think about that a little more. Um, is it going to be customization? Uh, we're looking at it once again. There's been a lot of questions about the horse because we're going to, you know, we're going to allow the horse to die. Do we just reset you further back in the game? Do we allow you to choose a new horse and then you have to retrain your horse? And if you can, if you can do those things, do you choose what it's like and then can you customize? These are all really cool ideas. I do, we do have some customization currently planned for the car, uh, but we're, we're crafting a story here, unlike a conventional. Uh, Fable RPG, where customization is absolutely key because you need your hero to evolve. We want you to tell a story where we know exactly where the drama is, that the characters absolutely have taken a path to a degree. And I think that's really important. So um, at the moment, we, we've got a single character and its gender is decided that it's a male. And that's because we, we did want to dilute the storytelling. Uh, you know, It's very difficult to, to give the same story if you're flicking from a male to a female to an older to younger to smaller to taller. So right now, the customization is there, but it's, it's not like a customization you've got in a traditional Fable RPG, which will stay with you know within the conventional Fable. I'm sure that that feature will always be a, a cool feature. Is there just like one path, or is there no, right? No, there's multiple. We, we have got an open world experience here. I mean, the demo we put together kind of looks very constrained, yeah. which was my fault because I just built a, a windy mountain track and just thought it looked cool, and that people think, yeah, oh, it's going down a rail. No, you're going to be able to sort of diversify, go left, right, round, you know. Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay. How much time has passed between Fable 3 and 6? I'll come up with that. Great question. So what we want to do is we want to, I mean, Peter said, I don't want a prequel. I want to move the story on. So it's after Fable 3, about 50 years, we're saying. But, we're, but in the story, we're taking you into a new region of Albion because we want to revisit some of the beauty from Fable 1. So we're kind of going off the beaten track. And we're going to take you back to a place where it was more superstitious, it was more kind of magic in the world, because we really like that from Fable 1. Over here, yeah, and then I'll come over there. Yes, both of you guys, but you first, because uh, I'm actually, no, ladies first, excuse me, that wasn't very English. <laughs> Apologise. Uh, how are you going to be moving around in the game when you're not like on a horse or anything? You said first. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. Great question. Okay, once again, we had two minutes of, uh, uh, at E3 in the press briefing, so I basically put together just demonstrations of spells. That's given people a, a real sort of uh, a false representation of how you move on foot. What we're gonna do in the coming months, especially the next show we're showing at, is show you how moving around on foot's gonna work. So don't worry, it's coming. It's, it's not like that. And then you, that sir, and then you, sir. That's your question. That was my question. I should have come straight to you, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> um, is it only gonna be first person or are you gonna actually- Good question. No, uh, the question was, is it only first person? We wanted to bring first person in to a Fable g game because with using your your physicality, it just felt more natural to choose the first person view. But actually, we, we, we play this first and third person. You do see you as, as the hero in, in many parts of the game. Uh, we're, we're going to be showing that at our next outing. Uh, it works really, really well. I'm playing it back at Lionhead and going from first to third person just feels natural. It works really well. So, yeah. You there and you there. Uh, is there going to be... Uh... Um, I think if there was controller support, we tried to do the two things. I think we would fail. We'd fall somewhere in the middle. Um, you can play this on the controller because at the back of the office, when you're developing games, it's just easier to put controller inputs. But it just feels better as a connect experience, and that's how we're trying to design it and balance it. So I prefer it to be a connect experience as developers. I love the idea of playing in new mediums and playing with new ways of making games. I really want to make something that the core fans go, you know what? This works. This is this is still my fable. I enjoy it just as much as playing a controller game. And we should still make controller <laughs> controller fables. We're not going to change that. That's not going to go away. Or any other game that we make will still support a controller. But this, I think, deserves to be a standalone uh, uh, connect experience. Any more guys? Are we good? <laughs> Great. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of the show.